Hello again, everybody. I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to our YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching uh, this live broadcast again. And uh, today we're doing watercolor paintings, two of them actually. And uh, I've had them up on the screen for a little while if you've been watching. Uh, and I want to uh, just take a very brief uh, time at the computer and just show you a couple things. I don't have a lot to show you on the computer. These are pretty well uh, done in terms of a value map. We don't have to do a value map. They're pretty simple. I didn't do a grid uh, either. Um, I just want to show you the sketches kind of up close so you can get a good uh, high uh, uh, size picture, a good size picture of them so you can maybe stop the video and snapshot that if you want them. You can also get the uh, sketches on my website site. Um, so uh, anyway, hold on. I'll be right back on the computer. Okay, here we are on my computer and I uh, I want to show you just a close-up photo of the uh, one of the two pictures we're doing today. Um, this is a place in uh, Ontario, Canada, where my niece lives. She sent me these photos and uh, have been able to uh, figure out a way to paint them. They're in black and white, as you can see. Um, and that's always a good thing to start with a black and white painting sometimes. Even if you have a f color photo, it's good to uh, take all the color out and try to get the... Uh, Get the essence of the values in there uh, because the uh, that's one thing you can kind of get from these photos when you take the color out um, the sketch for this one um, it's really just a barn sitting up on the hill it's on the uh, homestead property that my niece uh, and her husband and family live where they live and uh, so we're going to do that sort of as a warm-up first it all should go fairly quickly i'm not going to spend a lot of time on it i'm going to use fairly large brushes and uh, we'll try to do that <clears throat> as sort of a, uh, a first step here. Um, following that, then this one has a little more detail in it. A lot of t trees, branch trees and branches. Um, we're not going to paint all those branches, but I am going to show you a few uh, tips that uh, you might be able to do with some uh, liquid masking that uh, I've put on these. And um, I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a second. And then uh, that here's the sketch of that one. <clears throat> Again, these sketches are on my website, so you can go out there and pick them up and download them and use them uh, for your sketching. Um, and uh, so that's really all I want to show you here at the computer. I'm going to go back over to the easel and we're going to get started on these two, two paintings very quickly. Okay, I'm back at my easel now and uh, I have my uh, sketches up here. I have two, uh, two paintings mounted here, two uh, paper boards here mounted so I have underneath this one the second painting so we'll do this one first um, and then we'll tear this off and have the next one ready to go. Um, the thing they did that's kind of unique on this one I've done it before but I don't know how many of you have seen it but I use this something called a fine line applicator which is a way of putting on uh, masking fluid. You put the masking fluid in this container and it has a very uh, fine tip on it uh, that you can use to put these on. There's a second tool that I just bought. Um, it's called a quilling tool. Uh, it's actually used for applying glue uh, for hobbyists, but you can get these things like 10 of them for $6. Um, they have a very fine tip um, and you can put this uh, fluid on. You put the fluid in the bottle and uh, you just put it on uh, where you want, where the snow is going to be. So that's really what I've done here with these. I've actually used these and put, put them all around so it'll be dry. So we don't have to wait for this stuff to dry. It doesn't take very long to dry, but um, if you uh, haven't tried out the fine line applicator, you can get these in two, two uh, diameters, a 0.5 millimeter and a 0.8 millimeter, I think. I'm not sure what this quilling bottle is. Uh, it's a little bit larger than this one for sure. But uh, anyway, those are some tools for using, getting on some fine. You'll see it in my next painting where we put on the uh, a lot more um, fine lines and uh, I use that tool for that um, as well. Um, let me zoom in a little bit here. I also have a tool that's uh, really called a shaper. Um, a lot of people use them in uh, oil paintings. You can use them really in any kind of painting. They have a rubberized tip on them. Um, and you can take it and sort of move this around when you put it on. If you don't want to get a brush dirty uh, with this uh, masking fluid, you can use this uh, uh, shaper and sort of move this around and get it the way you want it. Um, so that's a good tool to buy. They're not very expensive. Um, I recommend you get one of those if you don't have one. Um, all right, let's get to the uh, paints and my brushes. Typical, uh, this is my standard setup, Sterling Edwards setup. I have my uh, large brushes here, these bristle brushes, a, uh, a medium and um, 
small. It's like one inch, one and a half inch bristle brushes. Have a couple flats, a one inch and a uh, half inch flat. And I have about three rounds. I have a number uh, 12, a number eight, a number four, and then I have a script liner as well. So I'll be using those. That's I may I may not use all those. I I may not uh, I may use a couple other brushes, but pretty much that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to try to stick with a large brush for most of this painting, uh, this first painting anyway. Um, so let me go around the palette and show you the colors that we have here. Um, in the outside row, these are primary blue transparent watercolors. I have here neutral tint, primary blue cyan, ultramarine blue, permanent violet bluish, crimson lake. Primary red magenta, cadmium red, burnt sienna, raw sienna, yellow ochre. I have cupric green, sap green, limon yellow, and primary yellow. Then I have inside row, I have burnt umber, still to grain brown, and Auvignon orange. I have a couple of gouaches over here, which I don't use very often, but I just, I've had a couple of paintings where I've used those. And so I have a black gouache and a white gouache. Now those are not transparent. Those are opaque, uh, water soluble uh, paints. Um, and uh, those are, you have to be careful where you use those. You gotta make sure you wanna paint out what's underneath them because they don't mix with what's on the paper. Then I have a couple of other uh, experimental colors I've been using, cadmium orange and cerulean blue. Then I have some true transparent watercolors here, lamp black and titanium white. So all of them are transparent except those two gouaches there in the uh, inside. And uh, this is a Sterling pa uh, Edwards palette that I use. And uh, as you, most of you know, I follow him pretty religiously and uh, follow his paintings. And I've taken several workshops off of him. So I uh, like, like his style of painting and uh, that's kind of my thing right now. But uh, Anyway, let's get going on this. I want to uh, get my camera set up for you um, so that I can let you see everything here. Let me zoom in. I have camera controls. I have to be the camera operator here as well, folks, uh, since I don't have a crew in my studio. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's it. Um, let's get going. Uh, so this is the first painting. And uh, so uh, let me see here who's talking to me. If you want to talk to me, uh, just type into the chat window. I'll try to watch my computer here on my left arm and uh, left side of my easel and see uh, who's talking to me. S Simeon Yanofsky, Yanofsky hello, uh, good evening. How's my leg? He's asking. Well, my leg is fine, finally. It's all healed up and uh, I'm back to exercising and uh, working fine. It's not hurting and uh, so I've had a pretty successful uh, recouping from that uh, surgery and all that problems I had. Okay, so let's go. We're going to try to put some color in this. I don't want these to be just black and white. I don't want them to be uh, a, uh, a black and white. I mean, it's nice for a black and white study. Sometimes you can take the uh, uh, a black and white like this and use maybe a sepia color and just try to match the values if you want to try to do that. Um, that's a good exercise as well. I'm going to put some clear water on here and uh, try to leave room for this uh, the roofs where the roofs are. Uh, are uh, white with snow and I want to try to put a covering on most of all this entire uh, paper surface here and uh, I want to make sure I don't paint over these the roof here on this particular barn um, this is these are in Canada I think I told you that my uh, niece sent me a couple photos of her homestead her and her husband live on and uh, they're near Ontario, um, and uh, they really love it up there. They're on a on a bay. I think you saw me paint maybe a painting called Breaky Bay um, last August, I think it was August of 2018, and uh, that was a a view from the back of their house. We're going to paint their house next. So this is the uh, the barn that's on this property that they own and it's uh, a nice exercise in trying to just do some um, snow scene and uh, keep a couple of light uh, roofs available for uh, snow to represent the snow. So I've got all this water on here. I've got this paper 
My paper is uh, Fabriano Artistico 300 pound cold press. Size is uh, 11 by 14. And uh, so I got it kind of nice and wet. Um, and uh, that's kind of the way I want to leave it. You can't see the sketch, I'm pretty sure, but uh, I'll uh, be showing you what that's like here in a second. Um, so let's get some now I'm gonna get a little bit of a gray I'm not gonna just put a blue sky in here but I'm gonna get take my uh, ultramarine blue mix me up a puddle of that and I'm gonna add to that some of my burnt sienna so when you add burnt sienna and ultramarine blue you start getting a gray and if you want to have it more blue, you add more blue to it. If you want to have it more brown and warm, you can add more um, of the uh, burnt sienna. Um, so I want this to be sort of a, a bluish color at the top and sort of graying down and warming up as it gets to the bottom. So I'm going to put the blue at the top, start with that, and sort of work my way down. And again, I'm using a one-inch brush, that's all, um, so far. And uh, hopefully I'll... Uh, be able to bring this down in a nice even wash without this thing running everywhere. Need more paint than that. And we're going to just run it down here. I'm going to cover up everything. All these other things in the foreground are going to be uh, darker, so I'm not worried about covering them up. The only thing I don't want to cover up is the the roof areas on this uh, in these barns here, these two barn buildings. So now you can see the uh, masking that I have here on a, one of those branches. Um, that will have snow on top of it and uh, we'll be able to paint some shadows around that. And uh, okay, I want to bring this down to about here. And now I want to change the color a little bit. I want to warm it up a little bit. So I'm going to pull in a little of this uh, Crimson Lake which is a little bit like alizarin crimson, so I want to warm it up just a little as I come down to the horizon back here. Make sure I don't run too far over my snow. Um, because I didn't paint the roof over these uh, barns, that paint should not run into those. Okay, there. Get down here, get a little bit of this uh, color in there, and as I come more down to the horizon, I'm going to probably even redden that up a little more, um, just to uh, give a nice tone to it. Also helps with the uh, perspective. Okay. Um, it's a little bit more over here on the other side. I don't want to forget that. All right, so that's our sky. I may just put a little more blue up in the top to sort of darken it down just a little. I want to do it while it's still wet because if you go back in here too many times, you start getting runs and blossoms and all that sort of stuff. And I don't want runs and blossoms. So just bring a nice even wash down and uh, that will be fine. All right. All right, folks, our sky is done all the way down. Uh, I'm going to put some uh, water down here. This is all snow um, down here, foreground. I'm going to put sort of some water in it. I'm going to put a few of these colors, let some of these colors run down in there. Um, not too much, but I want it to uh, sort of get this, get a good underpainting on this whole thing, pretty much. Um, and uh, pick up a few of these colors, let them come down. When you have a sky like that, these colors will they'll tend to show up in the in the snow, right? Yeah, snow's not always perfectly white, um, and there'll be a little shadow somewhere around here, so. We'll throw those in and uh, 
we'll call it a day here, I think, for these. Might as well color with this thing a little bit, let that run together. Um, all right, so I've got pretty much the whole paper covered with the exception of my barn. Um, and uh, that's going to be have a white roof and a dark foreground or dark uh, foreground on it and some snow around in front of it. So there we go. That's why I said this is sort of a warm up. It's uh, not going to take us very long. Um, we're going to be done with this very quickly and then we'll be able to spend our time on the other other painting. I do this when I paint at my uh, volunteer spot. I, I volunteer once a month and paint uh, watercolors for my uh, cancer clinic. Um, and uh, I always do that. I always have one painting that's sort of a warm-up painting, I call it. And I do it very quickly. It takes me 30 minutes or less. And then uh, then I take off and uh, do another painting that takes a little bit longer. Um, and uh, I see this little hard edge right here. So what do you do when you get a hard edge in your watercolor like that? That's a hard edge. It shouldn't be there in this in, in this tree. So one thing you can do is you can use a, bris a bristle brush like this, put some clear water in it, come up in here and just sort of soften that edge. And uh, all of a sudden, I pretty well took that away. Right? And the bristle brush basically just scrubs out that color that was in there and uh, softens it all up again. So that's going to be a dark color anyway. It's going to have a nice dark brown on it. Um, so I don't want to worry with that too much. All right, so next step. We've got these trees in the background. I think that's still probably pretty wet back there. Not too bad. Um, let me see if I can put in some distant trees that are going to pick up this uh, violet color. And they're going to go back in here somewhere. I'm just using the corner of this brush, touching in some uh, areas that look like there would be some trees back there in the distance. Very light, very soft. Um, and as you know, as, as they come forward, they get, they get darker, right? So we will be darkening it up, and I'll be adding some blue to it. So I'm picking up my ultra blue and mixing it with that violet. We're going to put in some other trees that are right here that are a bit closer to us. So we're doing this for atmospheric perspective. Anybody have any questions? If you do, type them in the chat window and I'll see if I can uh, answer them. Have any comments? I'm getting a line here that I want to pick up. I don't want it to be quite that dark. I don't want that water. Because I paint vertically, folks, uh, I have, have to deal more with water than you would if you were painting this flat or on a slight incline. Um, so um, I have to worry with that just a little more than I would if I were painting overhead. So let's just put a few more of these trees up there like that. Put a little bit of a... These are back in the distance. So I want to leave room on that roof for the snow. All right. Um, I might as well close this off over here instead of leaving it like that. Okay, so let's just put a few things in here like this. All right. I don't want that to be rectangular. I don't want it to be straight. I want it to have some changes in, uh, in, its, uh, in the height and the width of these trees. I don't want them to all be look alike. Um, these ones here actually are closer to us. So I'm going to leave that right now for uh, some other paints to come over that. Um, come in here and pick up that water. There we go. All right. So now on here on the left side, these are going to be closer yet. So I'm going to start putting a little bit of this uh, uh, still to grain brown. I'm going to mix it with this purple I have. 
Hello, Richard. Welcome. Okay, so over here we're going to start putting in some trees. They're a little bit closer. I need to have a little more darker paint, uh, a little more uh, paint, a little less water. Uh, because these are closer to us, I want them to be darker. Um, pop in here like this. These are all going to have a... Uh, I think I'm going to try to do this whole painting with this big brush if I can. Uh, so just be careful with all this water that runs down. I don't want it to start making a, a big mess on my foreground here because uh, that's not a good idea. All right, let's put some of these in. Um, take the brush and just sort of push up. You'll get some uh, interesting shapes if you let the paint come off the brush however it will. And uh, so I'll go around this little building right here. Painting a small building like this is a little tight because it's uh, it's a lot smaller than this brush, so I have to be careful there. All right. Um, so I've got this these browns in there. I'm going to pull some more brown over here to maybe get, add a little more uh, balance to it. Um, I'm going to bring in some uh, my uh, neutral tint here and uh, start putting it over on the right side. I'll probably come back on this side and put in some more of the uh, neutral tint just to darken some things up. Let's put these in back here. These are all going to be a whole series of trees. Again, use the edge of the brush and just sort of push up if you can. And uh, get some nice feathery edges out there. Okay. a little edge along here. Alright, so I've got a lot of that this painting done here. Um, over here I'm going to come back and put in a few more darks to uh, give myself some trunks, some trees. That I want them to be going while this is wet and uh, and uh, so hopefully uh, they, they will show up as uh, nice trees back here in the distance. So I'm just mixing it up, getting some other colors in there while it's wet. They'll all sort of blend together. Um, and then if I want to put some, you can always do the uh, scrape out as long as you're not too late, like right in here. Put in some scrapes back in there. Um, it's probably just about right here. I might be too early. Remember when I talked to you about these scrape outs when you use a, a knife or the back of your brush or something to scrape them out. If you're too early, they just turn back to uh, black, dark. Uh, you see, I don't know if you can see that, but that's what happened right here. I was a little bit early. So I scraped the paint out, paint ran back in, and uh, it uh, didn't, didn't leave a white mark, so I'm going to put in a few more of these here that will leave dark marks. Uh, over here, the same thing. Uh, so if you want a dark tree trunk, get on top of it early. If you want a white tree trunk, wait just a few seconds uh, and uh, it will turn uh, white for you. Um, you can actually put in scrape outs like that. I probably can't see that very well. Um, but I have, uh, anyway, that's a nice trick to know. Hi, Richard. Hey, I, uh, how do I avoid a muddy color as well? Um, one thing is don't paint back over where you already painted unless you have to. Um, uh, that's the big trick about muddy, muddy colors. And right now I have colors that I've only put one coat on there. I haven't painted anything on top of it. 
like mud. Over here I've put a couple of colors together and I did it when it was wet. I did that purposely to try to get a, uh, a little bit of blending and get some more uh, color in the background. But if you let that dry completely and paint over it, it won't be muddy. Um, it's only when you mix colors too soon or um, mix a lot of colors on your palette and don't try to keep them clean. You know, my, my palette is a little bit muddy right now because I'm using brown and this uh, neutral tint. Uh, but if I want to put some more trees in here, see that's still wet. If I come in here like this, I'm getting a blossom around that, that tree and it, it's not necessarily looking muddy because I've got enough paint on my brush to uh, overcome any muddiness, uh, but um, so I'm just kind of doing this to show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so those trees are sitting in the background, and they'll, they'll when they'll dry, as long as they don't go back over it and over it and over it, you won't get mud. You'll get some distinct uh, colors, color differences. Yeah, Richard, I've been painting vertically since I've been on my YouTube channel because I. Uh, didn't really have the overhead cameras to uh, get a picture of my uh, painting surface uh, without uh, being vertical like this. So I uh, kind of gotten used to it. Uh, several artists paint this way. Uh, I'm not the only one for sure, but uh, it, it, I have to think about it quite a bit more and mess with it more than uh, might otherwise have to have to do. Um, all right, so now let's see where we're going here. We're going to put this barn on the side of this barn. Uh, in here, I'm going to get a mixture of these purple and brown colors. The colors that are already in my, already in this. This is more gray than anything. But we'll just put it in like this. Pop it in, down. Um, Maybe lighten it up a little bit for this other side since there's probably more um, light hitting this. I don't know. Let's see, I'm forcing myself to use this big brush. You don't have to do this. Um, okay. So that's that barn. Now see, if I don't go back in there, that's going to dry very nicely and not be a problem. Um, it's only when I try to go back and fix it, you know. Sometimes you want to go in and fix something. Well, sometimes in watercolor it's better to leave it unfixed than it is to try to fix it. Um, I'm going to put in a little bit of a spray in here and see if I can get something going with this barn so it's not quite so mechanical looking. Uh, I've got some shadows over here maybe from this barn. Um, since the sun is back here somewhere, um, we're going to just put in some paint and just kind of let it run a little bit. Leave a little top for the snow there and uh, let this come down here somewhere and uh, just go wherever it will. Um, maybe a little more blue, I get a little more of this blue in there, um, back in here maybe. So we're kind of on a hill here and things are kind of coming over uh, and down. Um, so I want to have some shadows in here that uh, look like there's, it's a farm field and it's been picked over and whatever. Um, so let's just kind of throw in a few more darks and some areas here that might be getting a shadow from something. Um, and then if you want, don't want those hard edges, you can just kind of come in here and spray clear water over it with one of these spray bottles and just sort of let it run. That gives it a nice painterly effect uh, and uh, makes it look like more of a, a painting than it does a, um, a photograph, if you will. All right, this big old tree over here on the right. Um, up before I leave that, I want to put a, an eave on this building right here. I 
that's good. Put another coat on this guy over here, let him, just so you can see that is a, a barn over there. Okay. Okay, thanks guys for the sky. That's, uh, it came out pretty nice, but that's because I went in there only a couple of times and didn't go back in. If I went back in multiple times, I'd be frustrated and uh, I'd be showing you something that's not very good looking if you go back in and get your sky in, get it in and kind of leave it alone is the best advice I can give you. All right, we got this big old tree here. Um, there's a little trick for painting trees that I may have shown you before, but if you want some soft edges in a tree, take take a wa clear water and just sort of run a bead of clear water down one side of this tree. Maybe some other areas, but at least down one side. It's not exactly clear water, but it's as close as I've got my hands on right now. So then take your paint and got a big wide brush you can kind of come in here and come down and as you hit that water all of a sudden it will lighten up I've got two colors in my brush hmm. and I manage that see how that purple the purple and the brown I'm using burnt umber you see how this is working down here? How this kind of lightens up on the left side where that water is? Something like that. Don't need all that. Um, and I want it to be darker on the right side because whatever light is coming in is kind of coming from the left side in this case. Okay. Um, get my. I'm well. I'm still going to stick with this flat brush. I started to cheat and pull out my round brush because I thought it would be easier, but I'm going to show you you can do a lot of stuff with just a round brush with a flat brush here. Okay. I'm just touching it, putting in some dark colors in the bottom. I want it to be darker in the bottom than on top. And have it run together while this is sort of wet. You can pull this together. Um, and I think there's another big branch right here, big, yeah. All right. So that's kind of fun. Put a few more trunks and things in here. Um, out here, this is where I might I need my flat round brush, but I'm gonna come in here and put in using my flat brush. I'm doing it to show you that what you can do with a flat brush, folks. Just get it on the tip, make it go like that. I've got some snow here, I've got some of that cover, uh, some of that uh, masking fluid there. And uh, I'm going to put this underneath again. We're going to make a big branch out of that. And then coming out here, we're going to have branches that probably don't have any snow on them. But we'll just put them in like this. and. Uh, let them come way out here. Let's get something out here. I'm just using the tip of this one inch brush. Or half of it. If I can get part of it to touch, I'll just touch on part of it like that. Okay, a little more dark on the back side of this tree here. A little more dark under here. Make that stand out a little bit more. Um, actually, this tree goes up a lot further. I didn't finish it off up here, did I? All right, there we go. So, a little rosy glow with the trees. Yeah, that's kind of neat. 
question, how to mix really dark colors. Is it really possible? I mean, watercolor, of course. Um, yeah, um, actually with watercolors, you take, if you want to get the blackest black you can get without using black, um, the best colors to use are something like alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, and uh, phthalo green. If you can get phthalo colors and uh, mix alizarin crimson, you take green, blue, and uh, alizarin, you'll get a very, very dark, dark black. Um, and it will still be luminous and transparent, and it won't be, uh, won't be something that uh, you're afraid to put on the canvas. Um, it's uh, or on the paper, rather. Um, I'm just kind of filling in that back area there. There's some... Uh, okay, so that's pretty good for that. Um, let me see if I can put a couple of things on this barn to sort of highlight a couple of things here. There's a door right in this area. I'm just using the tip of the brush. Uh, just add some interest. I don't want it to look like it's uh, just a a flat one color there. So these are just little details that you can add. A little bit of a shadow maybe in here. Maybe something on the other side slightly. Alright, um, what else? Um, I can take this, uh, I'm going to let that dry a little bit more and I can take this masking fluid off. Uh, see, I'm checking the uh, coming together now, yeah. Don't like paintings that look like photographs. Yeah, Richard, I kind of agree. If, if you're going to do a, a detailed rendering of a photograph to make it look realistic, super hyper-realistic, and there are artists that do that, um, you might as well just use the photograph and forget it. Uh, in my opinion, I don't want to make anybody uh, upset, but I think it's... Uh, I was going to change the color a little bit and put a little bit of this ochre color in here because these are these are still some um, grass, not grasses, but things are left over from, from this field being harvested and uh, whatever. There's some I'll mess it up here if I'm not careful. Uh, just bring in some uh, things that look like. Um, I don't know, just whatever, you know, there's, there could be anything out here in this field that's been, it's been picked, it's been uh, harvested or whatever, and uh, again, we can use our fancy water tool, and that way you get rid of a lot of, lot of the uh, hard edges that are left by just putting a brush to it. Um, uh, I do have some um, fence posts back here. See how my brush just split? I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just using the top half of that brush to make those posts because I just made a post down here that I didn't want. Um, but sometimes these brushes spreading out like that help you a little bit. Um, and you can always spread them apart with yourself if you want to do that so you have an ability to uh, put these things out there. Instead of going and getting another brush that's only that wide, I just use the big one and uh, and do it with that. There's a couple some fence posts down here. I don't think I'm. Uh, hope I'm not uh, getting too much in water down here. I think it's a little bit wet. So these flat brushes are really pretty nice for this kind of thing. So you don't have to do a whole lot more to make this sort of just an impressionistic looking watercolor that doesn't mimic the uh, photograph too closely. Um, and uh, just blue over here maybe, some areas that can have a little blue in them. Echo that blue over here, don't just leave the blue on one side. Uh, Something like that. It helps me give me a shadow of that barn, a little bit of shadow to this little barn over here. All right. Um, I think that's 
all I want to do, um, see if I can take this, how we've been doing, aren't we? It's about 40 minutes, a less. Um, I can take this rubberized remover here and, and just take off my masking. It just pulls that masking uh, fluid right off. I think I had some over here somewhere, maybe. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Yeah, there it is, right there. Okay, so now you see how that looks um, with just leaving that white. And uh, I'll do more of that on the next painting. Um, but um, this big one up here on the top, I'm going to add some more branches to him before I finish because I think he needs a little more stuff up here. And... Uh, Um, there's probably some more of the branches coming out here. Um, I'll put one a bit like that. Um, so you see how fast this was? I think I've only been less than 30 minutes on this painting from the time I started it. Um, and if you want to use a round brush, don't don't force yourself to use a flat brush like I'm doing because I'm doing it to make a point that you can do it. Um, but um, these little things can just be put in with the edge of this brush so easily. Something like that, a little darker down here maybe. And so I've got white paper, I've got white paper here, I've got white paper there, I've got white paper on the snow on the top of those uh, branches and then the rest of this is just I got some white paper around here, of course, but the rest is uh, it's the way it is, no, uh, no problem. So, uh, see the interesting how this wetting the left side of this tree made that sort of blend together and made a nice, really made a nice uh, point there, so it looks like it's three-dimensionally rounded. Um, so, um, that's it for this one, folks. Uh, Yeah, so I'll just put my name on here. I'm not going to use a big brush for that. I'll never get it done with that big brush. But throw a little signature on here very quickly. I need more water than that, folks. Come on. We'll tear this one off. We'll start another one. Um, all right, that's good enough. All right, so clean out my palette. Get some of this stuff out of here. And uh, I have the other one underneath here that's all sketched and ready to go. Um, don't have to do much other than just take the top painting off and have the other one underneath it. So works pretty well. All right, let's see if I can figure out which ones these I put on last. All right. Take me about a minute or two to change over, folks. If you need to take a coffee break or a bathroom break, go ahead and uh, we'll get this next painting going very quickly. So that's how to take a uh, black and white photo and put a little color in it. So there it is. All right. Um, it's fun to paint that way. I like it. Um, but uh, you have to think a little bit. Okay, guys, thanks for your comments. Appreciate those. Um, so I think I'm ready to uh, start this next painting now. Um, I just realized I didn't get a second clean bucket of water, but I've uh, got a, I do have a bucket of water here that's clean. So uh, let me uh, take a water break here so I can take a drink and not let you hear me slurping. Okay, so this one is the actual uh, photo of my niece's home on this uh, area that it's called Breaky Bay. Back in here, this there's water here. This is all water, if you notice in the photo. And then there's some trees and forest behind it. And then their their house sort of sits here. They have a nice little dock and everything out there for their kids to play in the water and. Uh, 
it's a beautiful area and uh, they really like it up there so uh, the only thing I noticed is I have a lot of this uh, graphite sitting on here which when I get done with a, my sketch many times is there I just got to be careful I don't want to take off my uh, masking fluid I have masking fluid here you can probably see it in some spots uh, I'm just going to take off a few of these branches so they don't stand out too much this one up here this is a big overhanging branch that's connected to a big tree over here on the right side uh, and uh, the tree actually wasn't in the photo well I, I shouldn't say that the tree was in the original photo but I cropped it down to the point where I took that big tree out of it but it still had this branch across the top and uh, so I want to use that branch use that for it so again I've got masking fluid here on the top to have some piles of snow on top of this branch uh, and then I've got some snow or some of this masking fluid in some other spots and uh, <clears throat> I think we're ready to go if you're ready I'm ready um, I'm going to do something similar here to the background on this one um, it was the same kind of day although the photograph that I had I'm going to swap it with this other one um, so it's up closer to me as I paint here on the top there we go all right it's good to have it close to me if I can all right um, when I look at this closely even though it's black and white it is a lot uh, there is a lot of uh, sort of a red reddishness I think it must have been close to sunset or just after sunset I'm not sure when uh, this photograph was taken but I'm going to uh, I'm not going to guarantee I'm going to do this entire painting with this one inch brush that other one was a practice sort of a get get the juices flowing and uh, show you some tricks that I could try for you so I'm going to put clear water on this all the way down about to the horizon again um, I've got another roof on this house that's uh, um, actually I want to put this all the way down to the top of the fence line here whoops got it in my dirty water Gotta keep it in my clear water glad you're all staying with me here um, I'm gonna try to keep this roof from getting uh, paint on it until the last minute the, their house actually is uh, is a sort of a white white house so let's get it all covered here and get it soaked I just want to protect that roof line so I don't have I can keep some of that uh, roof of their house clear okay folks I think that's enough for now so what color should we make this guy I've been doing some pinkish type skies lately for winter that uh, have an interesting appeal um, so I think I may try a little bit of that here um, I'm going to come in first of all with uh, just a little bit of my blue in the top and the upper part of the sky and then I'm going to fade that into a uh, sort of a pinkish color if I can without getting green so let's just start up here very similar to what I did on the last one but I haven't put any uh, brown in this I haven't put any uh, my dark uh, my uh, burnt sienna in here so I'm just putting this blue in here and then I'm going to follow it with my uh, cad red it's going to get just a, this cad red's a lot more warmer a lot warmer than the uh, alizarin or that crimson that I put on before so as I bring this down it's going to turn an interesting color of um, so I'm going to mix with that blue and uh, gonna get sort of a nice warm glow to the sky back here I'm just 
I'll cover this whole thing with this color. Maybe mix a little more blue in it in some areas. So what this is going to let me do is now if I take this this pinkish color, it will let me show it up in the foreground in the snow. So that's snow right in there. This is all water and okay, another big fast sky. Um, a little bit of that down here. I've got a lot of snow. I'm going to leave room for that snow at the top of this. Uh, so my center of interest is going to be this, uh, this house here on the left. Um, and it's going to be, um, make sure I don't have that running down in the roof. Pick that up. So, I don't know if you can see it that well, that's kind of, I turn, I have a monitor behind me and I turn around and look at it periodically to see what you're seeing and uh, just a little more blue up here, I think, in some areas. If you're going to put it anywhere, put it in the corners um, and let it fade again. and fade into the red here. So I've been able to uh, cover almost the entire surface with uh, minor exceptions here. Um, got some areas for snow here, the White House, and uh, that's pretty much it. So now the challenge is to get this with, uh, <clears throat> have enough darks in there to make it really pop and uh, to make it look like a nice uh, snow scene. Clear some of this out because this is supposed to be white snow in there. All right. Um, now, this is where I need to probably blow this dry a little bit because it's not going to dry fast enough for me to get back in there like I want to. So I'm going to haul out my uh, hair dryer and uh, get this thing going. I'm going to turn my microphone off for you guys so I don't blow your hairs off while I'm doing this. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Should be back on with my microphone. All right, so now this is fairly dry. If it feels <clears throat> room temperature or your, your hand temperature <clears throat> using the back of your hand, it's probably dry. If it feels cold to the back of your hand, it's probably a little wet. This up here in the corner is a little wet, but I'm not going to paint over that, so I'm not too worried. This area down here is uh, all nice and Feels nice and dry. There's a little bit of wetness right here. So I'll just try to avoid that area for a few minutes. <clears throat> Let it dry. I'm sorry, my voice is going away on me here. All right, so now we've got a, an area in the background here. I'm going to paint this background first. Um, and it's, uh, I'm going to make it a little bit of this bluish purple uh, back here. <clears throat> it's like a piece of land back here. It's just a sliver, but it's there, and uh, it helps tell the story of this being a, a bay with on the water. So it's just very, very small, I'm using a half-inch flat brush back there. <clears throat> you can't hardly see that, can you? So now, here in the, uh, the next layer here is uh, I'm going to make it a little darker, add a little bit of my neutral tint to this mixture I had, make it more of a dark steely color. Um, it's probably not quite dark enough, maybe. It has to be darker than what I put on, otherwise 
um, you're going to think it's, you're going to get confused with the perspective and um, you won't know that that's in front. <clears throat> it's still not dark enough. Get some more dark blue in here. Dark. So I'm painting around the tree there. I probably wouldn't have to do that, but I want this to be good and dark in the background here. So I'm going to... That's a particularly wide tree, so I'm going to uh, <clears throat> leave it unpainted. Negative painting, we call that, where you paint around something. All this area, these are all thin trees that I can... There's a... Uh, tree there. Um, so I'm just changing the color up a little bit, adding some different colors in some spots. Um, <clears> there <throat> we go. More dark, more dark. So if I leave room for these trees, I'll be able to uh, <clears throat> put in a lighter color maybe and mix the color up so it's not all uh, one color. And uh, it won't have to be quite as dark as what's, or darker than what's behind it. But anyway, there's the rough background, middle ground, I guess I want to call that the middle ground. Uh, I've got some more painting to do for the water, uh, but I want this to be Good and dark. Really dark. See, I'm painting over this again. Uh, who was it asked me about? Uh, anyway, um, the dark darks. Now, I'm not using the colors I told you a while ago. Um, I could do that and make a very dark black. Um, but I'm <clears throat> basically using my neutral tint and my uh, blue, ultra blue and neutral tint. They'll give me a good dark color for most of what I want. But if you want a black black, try those uh, <clears throat> thalo blue and thalo green and alizarin. You will get a black to beat all blacks. Putting just some texture in here now. So there's some, there are some trees and things back here in this distance. This is a, a wooded area, I believe, back here. So I'm going to put a few things that look like woods back there. So, give a little bit of a change of some variation in it back there so it doesn't look like just a straight line. I don't want it to look like a straight line. Which is kind of what's on the, <laughs> kind of what's in the photograph is almost a straight line. So let's mix it up a little bit, put some things back there to, there we go. All right, and there's our sky and our middle ground. Um, this area here has got the uh, water in it. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm having trouble with my voice here today, folks. Um, now, this water is actually lighter, lighter than the uh, background. I'm leaving some little gaps in there to make it look like there's uh, maybe some uh, movement in that water, even though I don't see any movement in that water from the photograph. Um, it helps tell the story that this is water back there. Just some dabs of white. Same thing over here, just keep going across. Very basic, sort of a thing I didn't put in that was some of this uh, red color. 
which I could do, come back and maybe touch in just a little here toward the center. Um, probably hard for you to see that, but up close for me I see it and uh, it turns it from a steel gray to sort of a, uh, a bit of a lavender type color. Even though I'm not using that big one inch brush, I'm using a half inch brush for everything so far. So, um, all right. So that looks a little bit like water out there, doesn't it? I think it does. Um, I've got snow here. The rest of this is snow. There's a fence line running. I got the building. Okay. Um, let me see if I can put this building in. Um, there's actually some roof area that doesn't have snow on it. Um, so I'm going to put just a little bit of that in here. If I can get some color. Yeah, that's something like that. Um, I'm just going to take this brush now and just use some clear water and sort of blend that down to make it... Um, where's my paper towel? So it's hard for you to see that, but I'm going to put a... when I put my line of the eave under there, you'll be able to see that. Um, so let's get going here with this. Put some windows in and a little bit more. Some windows. I have an eave over here I'm going to put in. Leave that white on the edge. If you can see that, maybe. And there's another the building has sort of a let's see here put an underpainting on this I'll come back and put some dark over that snow under it and uh, that will work there here's a little window I'm up really close on this, folks. I know you can't see this very well, but uh, maybe you'll be able to see it if you look at the... Uh, the photograph or the uh, sketch. Okay, just something like this here and there. There we go. Now you can start to see that roof line. Hopefully, that will do that. Put just a little in here. There, something like that. Don't need too much, just a little to make it uh, look like there's some kind of snow melting off of that roof or... Um, all right, I've got some trees that are going to overlap over here. I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to make this sort of a shadowed area here so that it Looks like there's a a plane change there on that where the roof comes out this way and goes down. All right, so much for that. Let's put a little bit of a couple more objects in there. All right, that kind of looks like a house sitting back there. At least it's the peaks. It's what's at the uh, top here that tell you what that is. So uh, as long as you have the top of it outlined properly, people will know that's got to be a house. It can be anything else. All right, I've got some trees and stuff over here I'm going to put in. I'm going to just use this purple. Dry brush, very dry. The paper's dry. And I'm just sort of scrubbing it back and forth. Um, put me a few darker colors in there in some spots. Come back and hit a few places. Um, loose, very loose painting here.
right. Don't need to do a whole lot, lot more than that. <clears throat> So you see how I did that. I just took the brush and just sort of scumbled it across the paper and the paper pulled off whatever it wanted to based on the bumps that are in the paper. Because this is 300 pound paper, it has a lot of uh, bumps in it. Cold press is what makes the bumps. All right, so this is all snow down here. Um, okay, am I ready for trees yet? Now let me put it, I gotta put in this fence row here. I'm gonna get my uh, browns out, my uh, burnt umber. And uh, see what I can do here with it. Um, I'm going to paint right under here. There's uh, put this all the way across. Um, again, flat flat brush. Um, I'm just mixing it up, putting. Uh, this is only burn umber only. Really, I don't even have anything else in it. Um, As a, that, so I'm going to put a fence post right here and leave room for the tree over there. Another fence post right about here. I'm altering the uh, I want these to be soft at the bottom so while they're still wet, if you don't do it while they're still wet you'll miss the chance you end up with a hard edge. So I'm just got one brush in one hand and putting in the fence post with the right hand and then coming back and putting in the, the shadow and a little bit of that soft edge at the bottom that connects it to the painting. Now down here the, the uh, trees are on the other side of the fence here. Um, Give me some more, get me some more of that. And uh, about right in here. Okay, get my brush with some water in it. Come back and get these while they're still wet. <clears throat> Just pull, pull down, pull forward. Where do you think the light's coming from? Um, give yourself a little bit of a shadow. Soften it up so you don't have a hard edge. That's all I'm trying to do. Don't want hard edges in there. If you leave a hard edge, What's it look like? You've heard me say it before. It looks like somebody just glued on that thing. Oh, Richard, tell me about your homemade clam chowder. Whoa, man. You're going to make everybody hungry here and they're all going to leave my, leave my painting class. Go get something to eat. <laughs> just kidding. Making me hungry, I'll tell you that. All right, there's the fence with a little bit of the, uh, the gate that gets opened here. Need to have this probably another piece of something. I also need some more of that fencing here. It's got to go like right about in here somewhere. All right. So now, if I can take this, move in some of this bluish color and start showing some areas where the shadows and the snow are.
heat it soft in some areas and hard in some areas. One of the things I used to, I learned from Tony Couch, he, he had a texture for everything. He would say, okay, what's the texture of wood? Well, wood is either hard or rough. So you either have a hard edge, which means it's a solid edge, or it's going to be rough. This is sort of rough texture here. I'm showing the snow. Snow can be soft or it can be rough. So I'm uh, probably putting in darker shadows than I need, but um, I'm sort of highlighting the fact that this is a, uh, a raised area behind this, this fence post here. And where I want it rough, I'll uh, leave it rough. That's basically taking the brush and just pulling it fast and it leaves whatever's on the paper. If you want it soft, bring your brush back in, put some clear water in there and, and uh, soften it up. So that foreground is pretty well done. I've got more snow back in here and I've got some bushes and things I want to put in behind this fence, but I'm going to stick now with this uh, brush. Okay, Richard, you're having lunch in Georgia. Okay, well, my friend's in South Africa. It's probably, it's nighttime over there. It's probably past the dinner time hour in South Africa. Lindy, what about it? Lindy toilets in uh, South Africa. Okay. So here we've got, take this and go like that. So I'm using this number four round brush and I'm just going in and putting in vertical brush strokes. Got some So there's so many branches in these trees, you could spend a couple of days just messing with the branches. <clears throat> 2114 in South Africa. Well, that's pretty late. But if you're hungry, might be time to eat. For some people. All right, so I'm just trying to get in these other trees now. I'm just using, still using almost pure uh, burnt umber for these. Come in here and start with a push flat and then pull up, pull up, pull up, 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 like that. Same thing with this one over here. This is it needs to be a little fatter down here at the bottom if it's part of that same tree. If you put any shadow on, on these trees, put it on the left side, since the light will be coming more from the right. In this case, over here, you want to put the shadow on the right side of the tree because the light will be coming more from the left. Right. How are we doing on time? We're 40, we're probably about 30 minutes into this painting, so we're moving pretty fast here as well. Although I'm not going to finish it in 30 minutes for sure. All right, just some trees there. We've got now these other trees are actually back further. I'll make them just a little bit darker maybe. Lindy. 
Okay. So here we've got another big old fat tree. So I'm letting some of the dry brush effect happen. If you can see that. These trees are fairly barren right now. They don't have much on them. this side of the water. All right, a couple more of these big tree trunks and we'll be ready to work on the branches and make some of these crisscross. Don't make them all just straight up. This, here we go. Okay, so I'm getting a, a good mixture of branches here. I need more over here, I think. It's a little bit thin. So let's make it a little thicker and bring another branch or two out like this. So I'm not going to begin to put in every Every branch you see in this photograph, no way. I'd be here till tomorrow this time trying to do all that. Um, so I'm just putting in a selective amount of branches that sort of help tell the story that there's a lot of trees that have lost their leaves. And uh, I'll be putting a few more of these, but. Uh, with this brush, I want because this is a number four round. It's got uh, it makes certain size uh, certain size brush strokes. So thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. All right, so I keep turning around looking to see what else I need to do. There's some areas where I can put in some more. I have this masking fluid on here. All right, now it's time to get a thinner brush. So now it's time to use that, uh, my script liner because it's much smaller bristles. Where'd it go? There it is. Oop. So the script liner's got very thin bristles, and uh, so I can make a lot finer line with that. Cold and wet in the UK, huh, Michael? Well, a lot of North America is cold and wet right now, too. I'm not in an area where it is cold and wet right now. I'm in Florida, so it's uh, typically very warm, and it is today as well. Actually, I have my air conditioning running, trying to keep me cool while I'm doing this painting. So I'm putting on just a few lighter branches here that are kind of wispy. Um, so it helps fill in this space up here a little bit so that you can see the, the number of trees. And this photograph, because it was black and white, it, it basically makes everything black here. 
and we've talked about that before that you don't want to make everything black like you see it in a photograph um, but uh, all right so I've got some other bushes here I need to uh, get my round brush I'm gonna get some uh, a little bit of this bluish color I think again here there's there's some bushes around the around this house around here and uh, so let me see here I'm gonna put it in just a little bit may not be able to see that very well I'm gonna make them a little bluer maybe I'm leaving some white areas and just sort of dabbing in some areas that represent these shrubs that are around this house um, and um, I'm using the blue to sort of coordinate the color scheme a little bit so kind of see that a little bit maybe hopefully a little bit more in here So just put it in, put a little quick line across there um, of these bushes. There's a little uh, dock type of thing out here that they have. So I'll leave that in. Um, over here there's just some, I think I want to put in a mo few more um, bushes here like this that, uh, careful, like that. There's some bushes around. All right, um, and then there's more here. I don't want to pull out my green colors. I'm just going to stick with this blue and sort of just put these in here like this. Blues and grays. So it helps define the bottom of that fence a little bit. Um, there's a bunch like right in here. So I'm using the side of this round brush to sort of connect the bottoms. Um, add a little more shadow, a little more dark in here because they would be casting more shadow. Rough, rough texture, rough brush. Uh, um, come on here, get some color in that brush. Okay, like this. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. That's kind of gives you a nice feel for that snow back there in the background. Um, snow around this. All right. Um, only a couple more things I need to do. I want to show you a trick. I hope I don't ruin my painting. Uh, but these trees, because they have... Uh, Oh, I didn't do my big uh, branch up there on top. Come on, pay attention here. <clears throat> okay. Um, one more set of this dark uh, burnt umber and neutral tint. Up here I've got this big, big old branch that comes across. Like that. Just sort of want to make it sort of fade out, get smaller. Something like that. It's got a whole bunch of branches and stuff sticking off of it as well. Um, I'm going to put a few of those in here. Certainly not going to put one. Some of these are coming up from below and going over. Something like that. Yeah. 
helps finish that off a little bit more up there so it looks like we got trees that are really growing All right, so now I can take off this masking. <clears throat> I want to let that uh, dry a little bit. Um, I think I left off, there was some bushes. No, it wasn't bushes. Those were uh, like really, I guess it might have been a tree or something back here that I ignored. I had some stuff on it like that. Helps, helps outline this roof a little bit better. All right, like that. I don't want it to be a straight line. Make it get it some. Okay. Um, I think that might be dry enough. Let me get my uh, <clears throat> rubber eraser here and see if I can take off what's covering my snow. Okay, see the snow? Didn't see that before. Uh-oh, I see a thing running right here. Okay, got it. All right, where else have I got this stuff? See the snow coming down? There it is. See it sticking to the branches? So I've got a bunch of that stuff coming off. And all of a sudden we've got a nice big old branch up here with uh, And a few spindly things down like this to kind of look like it's supposed to be connected to the rest of the painting. Something like that. Yeah, we got interesting little things. Just take your brush and just sort of squiggle it back and forth and sort of make these interesting little shapes that uh, see there. All right, now, I think pretty close to being finished. Um, I want to I want to show you this one trick and then I'll be done. Um, it involves using a sponge. Have you used a sponge before? You can buy these sponges at art stores. This is a little triangular one I have. I have some that are big ocean sponges and smaller sponges. But this, if I do it right, it will give me the kinds of um, look that you have in these trees when there's just thousands of little branches that are um, out there, but you can't paint every one of them. It just it takes too much time to do that, too much trouble. Um, so I want to, let me step back and take a look at this, make sure I'm, okay, I want to put some, I forgot where I'm going to put some, some of these. And uh, so you take this sponge and you basically just dip it in your wet paint on one end of it and, and then just start coming in and seeing, hitting it very lightly. like this. All of a sudden you're seeing wispy and you need to practice this a little bit. I haven't practiced it for ages um, but I'm trying to just show you what it looks like here. Um, Rather than try to paint every every fine branch, just 
put something like this in there and just touch it, hit it, and let it. Whatever you get's what you get. You know, don't. Uh, and you certainly don't have to try this on your painting if you don't want to, but uh, it, uh, it gives a certain touch to that that kind of tells you the story that we've got thousands of little branches out here that are just... All right, don't want to do too much of that. Some over here, maybe. All right, stop with that. All right, the only other thing I haven't really done is gone back under some of these little branches that have the uh, masking on them that I just took off. Um, but you can see there's a little white, white things here that look like they got snow on them, right? So if I just come in and put a little bit of a something like that, um, I end up getting these branches with snow on top. So wherever I had that masking fluid is where I'm sort of putting some more branches. So you don't have to do a lot of that. It's just sort of an interesting technique. Um, the big branch at the top is the one that's got all the snow on it. So over here, these are all just little spindly things that uh, was able to preserve the white. And, folks, I think I'm going to stop because I think that's about enough. Okay. Here we go. I'll put my signature down here somewhere and we will be done. Got to get more water in it than that, folks. Come on here. Here we go. Very light, so it sort of blends in. You can't even see my name in the camera. All right, um, I hope you like that. I hope you give this a try. And uh, I'm gonna zoom my camera back and take off my palette. All right, and say, there you go, folks. Uh, hope you like that. Hope you, uh, thanks for all staying with me and uh, give this a try. I've got a good sketch out there for you and uh, maybe it will be the kind of uh, thing that you uh, can improve on, certainly. I think you can uh, all try to improve on my paintings. Um, that's why I want to give you the sketches and show you the video and see if, uh, see if you can do it. So uh, check out my website, check out my Facebook page and uh, uh, send this off to send this video off to some of your friends if you like my painting style and uh, and also uh, make sure you go out to my website and get the uh, sketches so you can try this um, I think that's about all I want to say for now um, I, I did want to oh, I did want to tell you one other thing since you're my watercolor crew um, I'm planning to swap out my painting palette colors before long. The reason is My Mary Blue has changed their pricing and they've gotten very hard to become get uh, Miami My Mary Blue paints. So I just put another palette up here. This is my new palette. It's still a Sterling Edwards palette, um, but these are all Holbein paints. Uh, Holbein are beautiful transparent watercolors from Japan. Um, they're much cheaper now, or well, there's as cheap as My Mary Blue was before My Mary started raising their prices. So probably in the next watercolor video, um, I'm going to start using this new palette. I don't want you to have to go out and buy a bunch of new paints, but I will show you which paints sort of compare to the existing paints in my uh, palette. But you can see here, it's, it's, it's again 14 colors. We have Payne's Gray, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Deep. Royal blue, that's the extra blue that's added. Permanent violet, very similar. Um, we have a green gray, which is the only green on here. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, quinacridone scarlet, bright rose, brilliant orange, quinacridone gold, permanent yellow deep, and permanent cad yellow lemon. So we have a, a yellow. Uh, this is something you need to really understand in creating your palette. You need a yellow with green in it. You need a yellow with orange in it. You need a red with orange in it. You need a red with 
blue in it. You need a blue with red in it. You need a blue with green in it. So those are the primary ways you get colors across the entire palette without having to buy every color that's in the manufacturer's catalog. Um, then you need a few earth tones like uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber. Uh, quinacridone gold is sort of a, uh, an earth tone. Um, so think about your palette that way. Don't try to buy exactly every, every color uh, that somebody tells you you need to have, but think about the, the color tone of yellow. If it's got green in it, that's a good color. If the yellow's got orange in it, that's a good color. If the red's got orange in it, or if the red has yellow in it, it makes it orange, that's a good color. If the red has blue in it, that's a sort of a violet or a quinacridone scarlet or, you know, uh, alizarin crimson fits that color. So think about those having these complementary colors in them and you'll have a good palette for about what anything you want to do. So I wanted to tell you that before I forgot it because uh, probably in the next painting I'm going to be giving you some, <laughs> some new paints uh, that I'm going to be using. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say for now. Um, check out my website please and uh, let me know how you do on this painting. Put some comments in and tell me how you like it and uh, I will be re-editing this and putting it out on my website, uh, out on YouTube and on my website uh, probably in the next two or three days. So uh, till I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Thanks for watching.